we're talking about the same sense of nervousness that I feel sometimes because it's like, I still have good vision. So you feel a little, do, are you talking about being nervous about talking about something because you don't want to come across as if you don't want people to think that you're a blind um, comic? Not necessarily. Like I'm literally concerned because I, you know, like I said, when I got the diagnosis, I felt like the doctors just like washed their hands of it and they're like, okay, so that's good. We'll see you. In, uh, literally, yeah. the doctor's like, I'll see you in a few years, you know. And I found that my eyes have been getting yeah. progressively worse and noticeably so, where I didn't know, I didn't notice that I had a problem before I was diagnosed, or I didn't know what happened. Like, I, did, I wasn't clear that it was happening. I, that, yeah. In fact, the year before I was diagnosed, was it year? Was it two, at least two years before I was diagnosed, one Christmas night, um, I was putting presents in the back of uh, the SUV. And the, uh, I opened the trunk and put the put the uh, you know put stuff in, and it's pretty dark out. And I literally bang my face right into the edge of mm. the trunk because I couldn't see. It wasn't that dark. It was like dark enough. It was it was dark yeah. enough that I, I I couldn't see it right. But it, you know a normal person would have seen it. But I like sliced my head open and. Got you know, I took care of it, but I had no idea it had anything to do with my eyes. I just figured it was a stupid mistake. And now, as my eyes have gotten yeah. worse, I'm really becoming painfully aware of the of the islands of blank that appear that are not like they're not continuous, but they're mm -hmm. you know, they're things that like in like if I'm outside and it's bright out and I've like I've got sunglasses that are okay and and I can I can see more. But if I'm in, I'm in the wrong place at the wrong time. Like I really have blanks. Like it's not good, you know. I can still drive during the day yeah, yeah. well, and I can drive even at night because there's traffic lights everywhere. But it makes me nervous, uh, you know what what's coming because I don't know when it's gonna. Yeah. I don't know when it's gonna sort of be like untenable and um, something that like prevents me from driving or prevents me from. Um, you know, it puts me into a camp of where, yeah, I legally have a, I'm legally blind or something. I know what you mean. And, and it's kind of like the perspective in which I bring, I try to bring to the RP conversation because there's, you know, when it comes down to it, we see it great for people yeah. with RP. You know what I mean? Some people are born with RP and, you know, I've talked to people who, you know, they're legally blind and, by the time they're in high school, you know, never really even really got to drive, you know? So it's like, on one hand, you're like, you're experiencing something that is, most people are not experiencing, but then you also are, are a part of a community that have already experienced everything that you're worried about experiencing. So you don't, in a sense, you feel, or I'm talking for myself, in a sense, I feel grateful that I see as well as I do, but sometimes it's almost like a little guilt that I see as much as I do compared yeah. to other people with RP. And then, but also it, at the same time, um, like for me having a podcast and talking openly about it, I get self-conscious and nervous about people assuming that I think I'm the voice of RP. Yeah, You know what I mean? When I'm just, my when my perspective is just like yours, it's like, it makes me, it's, it's concerning to have RP. It's concerning because my life is changing and it's concerning that you can't put a pretty bow on a timeline and know exactly when certain things are going to happen. And that process of my, your, that worry is something that you have to personally learn to manage. And, uh, I personally like I, I quit driving a lot a huge part of that is because I moved to New York but I sold my car and I got rid of my driver's license because I just wanted to solve that problem that was well, like yeah. my way of of having control over it well I'm not gonna wait I'm just gonna make that move now boom done something I don't have to think about but like you live somewhere where driving's you know required you know I'd probably I, I don't know I'd probably still have my driver's license but even when I did, I was a nervous yeah. wreck driving. You know what I mean? Because I, I, even if, even when I felt confident, it's kind of what like you're talking about. It's like even when I was like, yeah, I think I can see great. Like right now, I feel confident driving down the street. I'm, but since you know, there's times where you're in your kitchen or like you said, hitting your head 
on that uh, the trunk, you know that things can happen, you know, yeah. randomly. Or if a car pulls out randomly, you might not see it. So it, it kind of having RP a little bit keeps you on your toes, and it kind of makes you feel never feel uh, a little bit sturdy in terms of you know. There's always is there a, something's always going to pop yeah. up out and get you. <laughs> You know, and, and driving's dangerous. You know, it's like, yeah, you know, I overcompensate. Um, like, I, I like, I'm like, do, I do this like scanning thing just to make sure I'm not like in the right light. I still yeah. can see. I can see my hands right now, but there's like there's spots that just are not right. And you know, I'm in front yeah. of a ring light, so it's adding extra illumination right now. But uh, I'm like, yeah. I actually do it regardless of whether I need to. I'm just like always like double checking both shoulders. Yeah, Even if I'm not changing lanes. I'm just always like scanning. Yeah, that's kind of my, I, I, I'm the same way. When I used to drive, I, I, my brother lived in Northern Virginia, and I would drive when I lived in Raleigh, North Carolina, and I would drive and visit him every now and then. And by the time I got to his house, it was like, because I would do the same thing with scanning and everything. By the time I got to his house, it's like my eyes were done. They were dead. They were exhausted. And it's like my eyes are, you know, scanning and I'm looking and, you know, like I'm constantly doing, you know, and that's kind of how it is sometimes when I go out in public here in New York, you know, I got to, I got to analyze the scene more than most people do. Um, and it can just kind of, uh, make your eyes tired and then every now and then you'll have an incident where you bump into someone and then yes. you're like oh. and then it's like man and then every now and then you'll have a day where you feel like do i have rp no some like, days is better you know like you you almost feel a little bit yeah and it's like yeah it's interesting but i know what you mean when you say you worried about it um it's almost like a a game like a real shitty game um, yeah, you're trying to to win. Well, you, you try to beat the <laughs> clock, you know, like you there, know. There, there's treatment yeah. modalities that are out there we know of, and uh, they're they're targeting particular proteins that are, you know, that that, that the eye needs, yeah. and um, you know, it's apparently working, but it's not really a reversal of fortune. It's really just stopping the clock from going forward, and like so, all of us would be yeah. happy to hold on to whatever we have at whatever state we're at. It would be awesome to yeah. go the other direction. But I think that, you know, you, you just, you just hope you get there before it's all gone. 